What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode I'm gonna be building out a custom user interface inside of Sketch for Mac that revolves around photography. The problem with using heavy amounts of photography in any design project is that it stalls the design process. You have to go find the images and source them and download them and import them and mask them and crop them and manipulate them. Ugh, it's so much work. I absolutely don't want to do it. So that's why in this video, I'm going to be using the new Pexels plugin for Sketch for Mac that allows me to do all of those things in a second. I'm also going to be using Sketch's data feature as well as sharing some tips and tricks and a little bit about my workflow as we go. I don't know what it is about finding a shortcut that makes makes me never want to do it the hard way again. All right, let's dive right in and start building out our interface. You can see I have Sketch for Mac open, a blank project, and uh, there's nothing going on so far. So let's uh, hit A for artboard, and let's drop an iPhone XS artboard on the canvas or on the screen there. All right, so when I usually start a project, I would usually turn on grids and get really nitty gritty about how that grid is set up. I'd start setting up vertical rhythm and to make sure all my typographic scale and everything is on point. I'm not gonna do as much of that in this project. I'm gonna kind of run and gun, but I just want you to know that I usually would be much more fine grained detail. So instead of turning on the grids by pressing Control G, I'm gonna turn on a layout and I'm just gonna work off like a normal columned layout like this. So I actually have a couple of icons to use for this project so I don't have to go through the process of creating them on screen. I have a basic menu and kind of like a meatball menu. Um, they're generic enough for this tutorial that we don't really know what they would do, but we don't need to know what they would do right now. That's not the point of this. So I'm going to try to uh, blow through this initial part so we can get to some of that fun photography kind of tips and tricks and how to speed up that process. But we are going to talk slightly about setting up a little bit of typography as we go. So let's start with a text field here. Um, and let's line it up right there with the very left edge of our icon. And let's do, uh, yeah, let's do a name there. Uh, we're gonna use Roboto, we're not gonna get real nitpicky. I have a dark color, a gray, and a really light picked out. So we're gonna use Roboto Bold, and let's pump it up to like, I don't know, 20 or 21. Let's go with that, okay? We'll put the name right there, and then right down below it, I really wanna put like the location of the photographer but I don't, I don't want it to compete with the name, obviously, right? So how do we do that? We're gonna create some contrast by dropping from bold to medium down to regular. We're gonna drop the, um, the size of the text. I'm just gonna divide it by two over here in, in my information panel. That takes it to 10.5. Let's just round it up to 11. And I'm also gonna drop down to a lighter color. And so now we have something that doesn't compete. We can write in a location. And we're gonna do something really awesome right now. We're gonna use Sketch's native data that they have plugged in there, Sketch data, and we're just gonna hit faces. And there we go, randomly, I got a picture of Michelle Lawson. That's pretty nice. Uh, so that makes that really, really easy. So I like that. Let's just work with that picture. And I think we should also have a few more details down below here. And now I'm just adding in the details and I'm gonna turn it to a darker color so that it stands out from the location like its own section. Do I wanna try this a little bit lighter maybe? Like, let's go light and see what that looks like. Ooh, I think minimal likes light. Let's go really light here on these. Let's do it, that's kind of crazy but fun. We have created the top section, let's just take all of it, group it together and call this bio. Uh, let's do some stat numbers down below. So I'm gonna make a line. Here I'm just drawing my lines, encapsulating the content. I'm bringing in some previous typography to work with and creating my stat titles. Now I'm gonna duplicate those and create the actual stats themselves. And I'm still working on that contrast between thick and thin and dark and light. Now we get to the fun part. Let's start doing a little bit of photo work here and see where this goes. I'm gonna start with some shapes. You know, we could just do like a normal like three up layout that everybody's used to like this, like this, like this, but that's boring. I don't want to do that. Let's take our shape and make it exactly half of the space we have to work with. And then let's come over this way, take off the constraints, hitting that little lock up there and let's just half it. Okay. That's about half and let's make it five pixels away. We give a little gutter there in between. We're doing what's called a masonry layout or a masonry grid, okay? So let's get five pixels away there and 
Kind of doing a little bit of a golden ratio thing here too, if you think about it, that's kind of cool. All right, so we have about five pixels of distance in between each one, and you get that masonry grid effect. Let's also bring down these this typography here. And since we're having like a masonry grid, let's kind of consider it like these. each of these things we're doing here is the project, right? That's the project, and let's. this is the date that the project was uploaded, something like that. But now let's do something really cool. Let's use Pexels to insert our images and save us tons of time. And so, to speed up this process, we're gonna use Pexels. And if you don't know what Pexels is, really quickly, Pexels is a free stock photography site. It's 100% free, you can use all the images for any project, whether personal, commercial, paid, unpaid, whatever. You can search, you can save, you can use them however you want. You can manipulate them. You don't have to give credit to the photographer if you don't want to. It's pretty awesome. Photography and videos, and they're all curated and filtered, so they're all really, really high quality stuff. They've now integrated with Sketch so that you can do all of that right here inside of Sketch instead of having to go to the site. So I'm gonna click on one of my shapes, Head over to data, go over to pexels, and now we can either do a random photo or search for a specific keyword. I'm gonna do a random photo and just see what happens. Boom, get some, <laughs> one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Uh, we get that in there. But what's really cool is, if I undo the constraints here, you can see as I stretch out this photo, it's contained and constrained inside of my shape. I don't have to mask things out custom. I don't have to work with the constraints. Like, it's just smart and bam, I have like imagery. So this is great if you want just filler content for now, but if you wanna get really, really specific, I can grab all of them at the same time and search for a certain keyword. Like for instance, what if we search for um, like mountains? Like let's do mountains. It fills in each of my shapes with mountains and that looks really, really good. <laughs> now we can name the project maybe like uh, mountain ranges and we've uploaded this on SEP. September 12th, 2019. That looks pretty good. Let's make the this title here a little bit more substantial to give it some contrast between the two. I like that. Boom, and that is a project. All right, so now we've placed our project inside of a folder. Let's, let's do a lot of work really quickly. Like for instance, let's come right here and do another one, another project, another project. Let's grab all of these and just use the Pexels data and put random images inside. Cool, we'll do, uh, we'll name this project Adventure. Boom, that was uploaded in October uh, 5th, right? Okay, cool. And so now we have a little bit of an interface built out um, that is just tracking these projects. And we put all, how many, how many photos? One, two, three, four, five. There's five, four on each one of them, right? That's, I mean, that's so many images that we didn't have to go out and hunt and size and shape and import and do all that stuff. Just snap of a finger, we had that many images in. Let's move on and build one more cool uh, interface out. So I'm gonna drag this over. We just want that image. So I'm just, I just got it out of there. And then let's do something kind of cool. Let's, uh, let's put this at the top and use those fun resizing options, just like so, to put that image into place. That's. Gosh, it's just so awesome, right? I didn't have to do any resizing. I'm gonna drag this below in my layers panel, and I'm gonna make sure that my icons are white so that they can actually be seen, okay? Now, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna make a couple shapes here. I'm gonna do a new rectangle, and we're gonna reuse some of these same techniques here. I'm gonna put that up top. I'm going to Drop it, let's see, let's see, let's see. Take these elements and pull it out of that folder, okay? I want this one behind, and I'm gonna put a gradient inside of it. And then we're gonna bring the opacity of the whole thing down. I just wanna make sure that, that those icons are visible at the top, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my shape down, I'm gonna fill it, with a color. The color I've chosen is kind of based off of the image. I think that's kind of like a cool thing to do. And I'm gonna you take that shape and just select the top two edges. I'm gonna do that new iOS kind of style, just like so. And uh, cool, so now you can see, it's hard on this image, but I have just a little bit of, like a little bit of curvature on the outsides of them. Okay, I'm gonna put a border on it um, and let's 
Actually, you know what? We won't do a border. We will do an inner shadow. There it is. Not a negative value, but just like that. And let's bring the transparency of that down. See, now I can just see the edge of that a little bit better. Let's zoom in. You see it? That looks nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Cool. So I think what we're going to do in here is do a little bit of a commenting section. So let's get an avatar, maybe a name and even take this information and we'll reuse it. Okay. I like to reuse components just to keep things consistent and make it quick for me. Uh, you can see that as I'm moving things over, I'm moving to a white text on a dark background though. And when I do that, we have to bump up the size or the weight uh, of the typography, just some readability, some clarity. So I'm just playing with that here. And as soon as I get it the way I like it, I'm gonna start duplicating these comment sections. And then I'm gonna be uh, filling those avatars using the Pexels plugin. And I was actually able to find some awesome portraits or avatars through the plugin. And now I'm just gonna create a gradient and give a little separation so I can build a comment box on top of it. Now the last thing we want to do is let's take our rectangle for our chat box. Let's duplicate it and let's grab every corner and give it a radius. Let's make it white and let's turn it into a chat box. Just like so. We want to line it up with everything obviously. Line it up like that. That's really big and I hate how curved that is. So let's decrease the curve right there on the edge. I like that. That's pretty simple, pretty easy. And we'll just take one of our, one of our pieces of text and comment doo -doo -doo, like that. Let's bring it onto our chat box and give it one of our grays. And I don't think it needs to be bold like that. I think we could probably go back to regular for that. And uh, we're gonna need an icon, so let's just grab an icon. I'm gonna throw one in really quick, something like that. And now you have a nice chat box that goes with uh, like this individual image. So we could prototype this and do all sorts of stuff, but the key point is that that how quickly I was able to manipulate all of these images like that. And, and anytime I don't like what I have, I can grab them and I can just simply like refresh this data and it's gonna do it right from Pexels. I don't like it again, I'm just gonna refresh that data. Boom, just like that. Man, what a great shortcut to a really difficult problem, which is sourcing images. Do it with Pexels, do it in Sketch, it'll save you tons of time. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do lots of content about design and development and walkthroughs just like this one, so maybe stick around. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and make sure to check the description below for the link to the Pexels plugin and Sketch for Mac. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and finding the shortcuts that work for you. I'll see you in the next one.